like to call to order the meeting of Monday, January the 25th. If you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, if the clerk would please take the roll. Council Member Archibald? Here. Council Member Ashford? Present. Council Member Lamb? Here. Council Member Mosierak? Here. Council Member Pemberton? Here. Mayor Rep? Here. You have the minutes from the regular meeting of January the 11th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So moved, Madam Chair. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Part. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there any changes to the minutes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will stand as submitted. We have uh, two presentations tonight. If the clerk would please read the first presentation. Mayor Rep will present a plaque to former council member Lisa Beaton in recognition of her years of dedicated service to the city of Port Huron. Lisa, if you want to join me at the podium. It's in, in appreciation of two years of dedicated service to the city of Port Huron, a grateful community, city council, and administration with a thank you. And I do want to say thank you very much. You haven't really moved on because you're still <laughs> representing. That's right. I'm still you know, here. in case people misunderstand that, you still are representing the south end of Port Huron. Yes. So your heart's still there in Port Huron. Absolutely. You just moved over to the county, but we do appreciate the two years you put here. Well, thank you. And we will miss you very much. Same. Yes, so I wanted you to have this Thank you. on behalf of the council, and there's the box right here to take and put it next. And maybe you'd like your old name. Yeah, first. thank you so much. <laughs> so you take thank that you. home and hang it on your wall. Thank you. I but thank you for it. the service that you gave the city of Port Huron. And do you want to say anything? Uh, just thank you to the residents of Port Huron and my fellow council members. It was a great two years, um, certainly a learning experience, and. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to represent still uh, Port Huron at the county level and to anyone in, that's considering running for office or um, taking that step out, I would encourage you to do that. It's important that we're involved as residents and uh, you, you never know what's going to happen or, or where it'll take you, but it's definitely worth the, the journey and so thank you very much to this council for your support. Thank you, Lisa. Presentation number two. Fire Chief Nicholson and representatives from Redstone Architects Incorporated will give a presentation on the city's fire stations. Mayor Rep and Council, at your direction, in order to develop a long-term strategic facilities plan for the fire department, Redstone Architects was selected to provide a feasibility study in regards to current and prospective fire department facilities. Tuffer Kowalski is here tonight to present the findings of this study. Dan Redstone, the principal at Redstone Architects, is also available at the conclusion of this presentation for your questions. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Tuffer Kowalski and I'm with Redstone Architects and Dan is joining us on Zoom. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, Redstone I have to unmute. My name is Dan Redstone, and I'm from Redstone Architects, and it's a pleasure to be with you tonight and to have Tefra present our findings uh, to the City Council. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Redstone Architects was engaged by the City of Port Huron to develop a strategic plan for the fire department. Uh, we analyzed two options. Uh, option, option A was to renovate three three existing, existing fire stations, stations to meet current and future needs of the department. And then, and then option B was to build a central station, a new central station, and consolidate and renovate one satellite station. Redstone 
the Redstone team that was tasked with this analysis is Redstone Architects and the engineers listed above, or listed on the screen. Uh, Redstone Architects has over 20 year, a 20 year relationship with most of these uh, firms. Uh, the analysis of the three stations included architectural and engineers' observations and documentation of the physical conditions, determining the code and standards in compliance, and developed a needs assessment for three existing stations. Current and future needs were determined through interviews with the chief and key staff. The central station was built in 1960, uh, and the findings indicated that the building required major renovations to maintain operations. In addition to structural and mechanical concerns, there were numerous code and standard violations. The site is not adequate to accommodate the determined needs for the station. The existing building, which is approximately 9,000 square feet, the amount of space available for expansion was about 4,300 square feet. To renovate the central station, it does not provide enough program space and it falls short by about 11,000 square feet. Station 3 also required structural and mechanical renovations to maintain operations. In addition, code and standard violations needed to be addressed. Any possible renovations will require the apparatus to back into the bays, which elevates the chance for accidents. The existing station is about 4,000 square feet. We needed an additional 6,000 square feet to reach the program space. Station 4. Station 4 was engineering and operational concerns similar to Station 3. More problematic was the ability to renovate and expand. In order to meet the space needs requirements for the site, there had to be, the, the site had to be used for border to border and did not leave any room for any setbacks or vehicle circulation. So the existing station was 3,400 3, square feet and the program space was nine, so we needed additional 5,600 square feet in order to make this work. So the central fire station at 13,400 was $8,000, or I'm sorry, $8 million, and is still inadequate for their needs. Uh, the renovation for station three was about five million, and the new station four was about four and a half million. So the total operation, or the total projected cost for the three stations was about 17.6. So option B was to provide the city with a new central station and one satellite station. The spaces needed for the new station included the fire needs, moving admin from the city hall to that station to keep the fire operations together, an outbuilding, and a possible training tower. The station substation would include the consolidation of the two smaller substations and apparatus from two stations down to one. The runtime analysis to determine the best location for the response times for the two stations, Beckett Rader conducted a runtime analysis. The analysis determined that the best combination was the White Park site and station number three at 94.7% for a four minute response time, meeting the NFPA requirements. The new, or the, the White Park site works well for the new central station. It allows apparatus to egress onto 10th Street and provides adequate site circulation. A renovation of station three adequately supports the consolidated spaces. However, the site offers no growth. Uh, it was, the site is maxed out for building area and the circulation is tight. Apparatus are required to back into the bay. An alternate would be to provide an 11,500 11, square foot station on a new site in the general area. So option B analysis. So a new station um, is roughly 12 and a half million. A renovated substation is roughly just under six. So you're looking at about 18 million. So to renovate the three stations, and not still meet the program space, the fire administration would still be located at City Hall is just not sustainable for the next 20 to 50 years for an essential facility. Uh, you can spend 2.2% more for a new station that meets all of these requirements, 
Uh, it would be our recommendation that Redstone Architects would recommend that the City of Port Huron uh, plan for option B. Uh, that would provide the City of Port Huron Fire Department the facilities that would last at least 20 to 50 years. Is that the end of your presentation? Yes. Okay. Did anyone on council have any questions? Yes, council member Ashford. Um, thank you, it was a nice presentation. Uh, even though we did do some double dipping because uh, our administration was uh, kind enough to let us, you know, in before uh, going through the whole book there. But so if you don't hear a lot of questions, that's probably why. But I do have one thing to ask you. What would be the, the timetable uh, on option B if that was to come to pass? Well, we're going to have to look at a continued outreach to our external and internal uh, stakeholders, uh, including some town halls with the public to make sure that our numbers are verified. Uh, we're going to continue uh, to analyze all of our run data in, the, in this uh, year to, to verify that these uh, response times are correct. But we will be looking at a funding uh, mechanism hopefully in place by the end of this year, November to December of 2021, uh, development of plans and architectural drawings in that next six to nine month time span, and hopefully construction shortly thereafter. Oh, okay. And just lastly, Mayor, and, and uh, I can appreciate the fact that uh, when we were in discussion, how, you know, you were telling us that, sharing with us that even though we're only just receiving it tonight and filing it, that you just wanted to wait on our public so we could reach out more to our public to have buy-in because this is a huge capital project and that I think that we're going to be doing it in phase, phase, phases if we happen to do this. Correct. So uh, I just want to commend you on that because I don't think, you know, we should jump out here. It's not just a council thing. This is our whole city that's involved and need to be a part of making this decision. Yeah, I, I really want the public to feel confident and comfortable that the fire department will be able to continue to meet their needs uh, in the next 30 to 40, 50 years. Uh, I mean, my ultimate goal with this plan is to create a sustainable and resilient fire department uh, for the city uh, in the decades to come. Right, and we need that for safety. And, and, I, and actually, we've been talking about this fire station for, I don't know, following for years on, you know, and so we don't want to, you know, come to pass and don't have you know, the right things in place or right structure, you know, down to nothing that we can't serve properly our citizens. So, so but anyway, great job and thank you, Richmond. Mayor. Yes, I'm Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Chief Corey, um, in, in this presentation, it talks about option A is a 99% response time. Option B drops that to 94.7%. But when we met originally about all of this, you explained that 99 point whatever it was is probably not really accurate because not everybody's on site yet and you have to wait. So Correct. could you touch on that please so that the public understands and hears what we heard? So uh, in general, uh, NFPA 1710 is a standard for the fire service and it governs response times for full-time career fire departments. And what we're looking for is a four minute response time with an engine company. And when I say engine company, I mean a fire engine with four people. We're looking for that four minute response time by the first arriving engine company uh, in four minutes or less 90% of the time. So when you saw 99.9% .9 of uh, runs being covered within four minutes, that doesn't take into account the total number of fire personnel arriving on scene. Right now, we only meet NFPA 1710 with the first arriving engine out of Central Station. Any of our responses from the outside stations do not meet that standard. So if we move to a two station model with our nine man minimum, which would uh, allocate four firefighters per apparatus, so we would have two four man rides plus a battalion chief, we would have true NFPA 1710 coverage over 90% of the time in the city. So that's what I mean by a sustainable, uh, resilient type fire model that our, we can provide the service to the public that they expect, and we can reasonably protect our fire department members in a safe manner. Thank you. Uh, 
other questions from council? What is our uh, plans as far as outreach for this so that uh, the public is well informed and has all their questions so answered? So it will be a couple, two prongs approach. One, we'll reach out to our residents to brief them on the study, the results of the study. The second component is we will also reach out to our federal partners. So as we know, our police, our fire department uh, provides hazmat response to our federal facilities and our international border crossings. They also provide tactical rescue, dive team, um, uh, support to the bridges. So we'll be meeting uh, with our federal partners to look at additional funding. This simply, we cannot fund this by ourselves. We will have to have some type of federal partnership to fund this. We'll also do a secondary review of the study to make sure that we have a second set of eyes on it. Uh, we don't, NFPA standards are recommendations. They are not what the city goes by or what most fire departments go by in the state, but they're like the gold standard of what you want to reach for. And so we'll want to do a, a secondary look to make sure that there's no cost effectiveness or value engineering we can do elsewhere. Uh, so it'll be external reaching out to our neighborhoods. We're also reaching out to our federal partners on possibility of funding and also taking a second review of this to make sure we have a second opinion to validate the numbers. Yeah. All that should be done in the next couple months. Um, the, the mayor and I met with our congressional leader today. We're going to meet with our U.S. Senate, US Senate counterpart in D.C. in April. Um, and also looking at getting a meeting with the Under Secretary of Homeland Security to discuss our support of the bridge. This is a good time to meet with our legislator. Did you hear Michigan has a surplus of 3.7 billion? So we need to tap into it. I know <laughs> how Nancy works, and they'll, they'll blow through that in about a weekend. So. I know. Well, you better get our, to get our bid in there first. So tonight, really, all we're doing is just receiving it, filing it, and you're going to do more work on it, and uh, then we'll revisit it again. Is that correct? Yes. Because I do think it takes more than just one or two meetings in order. This is a, a major investment in our city. And uh, as was mentioned, you know, Central's been there since 1960, so 60 years plus. So we want to make sure that we're good for the next 60 years plus when the rest of us, we won't be there, but <laughs> well, at least most of us will not be there in 60 years. So I hope um, not. No. <laughs> I hope I am. You're hoping you are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you're I'm going to say maybe, maybe you're the only one on council that will be here, but <laughs> it'll be your charge then <laughs> to make sure it happens. Anyways, uh, any other questions for the chief or the consultant? Thank you Thank very you. much for bringing this to us. We have one public hearing tonight. If the clerk would like to read that. To hear comments on the general needs in community development, housing, and special services utilizing CBDG and home funds. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the City Council on public hearing number one? Public hearing number one is to do with a specific item and it's, the, uh, it's for comments on the general needs in the community development, housing, and special services utilizing CDBG and home funds. Community Development Block Grant Funds is what it is. We do. If you want to address the council on it, you're welcome to stand up at the podium and give us your name. But yes, they do. It's, it's, it's for comments if you think that there's, it's for... Uh, it's more for edification, I'm trying to... Okay, it's yeah. for, uh, the funds are for uh, moderate and low income and we distribute them. We get a certain amount every year from the federal government and we have public hearings uh, once a year in order to see if there's any needs in the community that someone wants to bring to our attention. Sometimes we have groups that come in, uh, the, say I'm just gonna use it as an example, see the soup kitchen or the somebody like that will come in or uh, dare or something like that asking for funds for certain things. So. Oh. Th that's what the, the public hearing's on. I'm Esther Susan. I'm a three plus year mm -hmm. resident of Port Huron. What was your name again? Esther. Esther. Susan. Esther Susan, okay. And I'm kind of curious because I know at one time I did call about community block grants uh, on the third floor and I was told you guys didn't do them. I don't know who would have told you that because we've 
doing been doing them years. for years. I mean, you do federal beauty grants, but not community block grants. Wait. That's what I was told. Depends on what you were asking for, and I don't know what you were specifically asking for. For community block grants, what do you do? You do any? But what, and I was told what no. was your purpose? I mean, did you give them a purpose as to what you wanted the money to be used for? Just home repairs. Just. Um, we have a lot of home programs. I would encourage you to. Uh, I was not steered. Um, if you'd like to leave your uh, yep. number with our city manager here, I will have somebody call you. We're the manager. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's still employed, yes. <laughs> if you'd like to give him your phone number, uh, just you just sure. and then he'll have somebody call you. Okay. Yeah, I did have a, I did have a, I did get a beautiful a federal beautification grant, which I was left very unpleased with. So I felt very unhappy with the service I received. Well, we have a specific department, and they've got uh, yeah. very helpful people in there. So he will make sure that someone calls you. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, uh, can I just make a slight off the? If you, if, because of mask wearing, it's difficult. I couldn't quite hear every what all you were saying, because if you're not speaking directly into your speaker, yes. the mask is bouncing your words back in your mask. Well, usually if we're talking for a long period of time or yeah. doing a presentation, then you take the mask down temporarily. But usually we keep them up if it's just a comment here or there. So. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And if you're ready for the public comment, I'd like to do that too. Okay, well, I have to finish this part first, okay? And if you want to give your, uh, yeah, He'll, he will take your number when you're, he's done. Mayor and Council, just to give you a quick rundown so the community knows what we've done with the additional $632,000 of COVID funds. Um, you guys, your directive to me was to get it out the door and in the hands of the people who needed it as fast as possible. We gave $45,000 to Mid City Nutrition for the increase of out. Uh, put meals in containers so there's a lot of meals to go. We gave the community action, action agency more than $210,000 for rent, mortgage, and utility assistance for our residents. We gave the EDA $75,000 to give small business grants to businesses within our community. We gave the St. Clair County Council on Aging $47,000 to increase funding for Meals on Wheels to get food to our senior citizens who were vulnerable, who couldn't shop and couldn't go out during the pandemic. We spent $15,000 in providing uh, family garden seed packs to more than 4,000 uh, residents um, and actually expended it. Uh, we had grant dollars come in outside to give it to additional countywide residents as well. We gave the Blue Water Rescue Mission $20,000 to deal with COVID uh, compliance within their shelter so people could go to that shelter and be safe from COVID-19. We funded to date $32,513 for testing sites for Lake Huron Medical for heating and closure systems. Uh, we have a total of $50,000 allocated, so there's $17,000 uh, and some change left for additional testing facilities. We gave the EDA an additional $50,000 to help restaurants and businesses that had capacity issues who couldn't do indoor dining uh, because of the pandemic order as well. Uh, we also have a remaining of $74,000 for additional grants, so in total, $138,000 in round two. We also gave an additional $30,000, so a total of $75,000 in mid-city nutrition to continue that feeding program as their demand has increased throughout the pandemic. We also took about $2,400 just for our simple administration cost. So in total, uh, we did $632,000, $691 given to people in need in this community. Very we were, good. I believe we were one of the communities that got it distributed the fastest. Good. And I, we did it by working with Community Action Stage EDA, we didn't redevelop the wheel, we just used existing mechanisms and infrastructure in place to get these dollars out. Thank you. And also, just before I close the hearing, just to make a comment that Ken Harris did give everybody on council some comments that he had relative to this hearing, so I'm just noting that for the record. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to public hearing number one? Seeing no one else, I'll declare public hearing number one closed. And I will open it up for public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to come forward, um, you can come up and give us your name, and you have four minutes. Hi, Esther Susan. Um, we're here in the city. Uh, just um, when the school, um, the college, bought some homes out, apparently. Quite a few people left pets behind, and 
for those who live near the school, I, I'm just a couple of blocks really from the college. And there's cats roaming. I haven't seen too many dogs roaming, but cats roaming. And there's been several strays come to my home. And stupid girl that I was, I fed them. I found out that's a, a no-no rule. But I've never been able to be unkind to animals. The trouble is nobody is picking these animals up. Nobody will pick them up. <clears throat> And I've been coded for trying to, you know, shelter, provide a shelter for the, you know, the cold winter coming on. And that was bothersome to me, um, to be co coded for trying to be a human. And I'm just wondering, what is the city going to do about all these wild pets? Because nobody's accepting them. I've tried. Even the police told me they weren't accepting, weren't picking up animals. So the hardest of winter is on coming, and I feel bad. I can't take them in, but I hate to see them in the bitter cold, especially like a, this week. You're down in the 19s, and we got a snowstorm coming on. Is there any chance that the city can find a way to open it up? Or we do not have any ordinances against cats, and. Uh we don't pick the cats up. You might want to contact the animal control, which is through the county, or the Humane Society. I've tried them all. We don't do that. With the, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, and I agree with you, but we do not. We have no rules about cats. Dogs, yes, but not cats. So there's really does, a, does the college have any responsibility after buying these homes and then leaving them abandoned? and? with animals, I mean, did uh, they not take any check to make sure that the animals weren't just released? I, no, I, not to my knowledge. Like I said, it's, that would be a humane society issue and I would suggest you get in touch with them. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I just hate to be a, you know, it's kind of hard. No, I understand. I took the shelter away because I don't wish to be coded, but I feel really bad. They, you know, I understand. I, these animals might just freeze to death, yeah. and it just seems very cruel. And I, I think civilized people aren't cruel to animals. No, I agree. I agree. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward to the for public comment? Good evening. Can Good you hear evening. me, or do you want me to take my mask? You can off? take it down if you'd like. Um, my name is Patty Samar. I am a resident of the city of Port Huron, and I am also the editor and publisher of Blue Water Woman magazine. This is my friend, <laughs> Donna Schwartz. <laughs> She's here with me, too. Um, we are here tonight uh, at the behest of Mayor uh, Pauline Rapp to make a presentation. This week is very special every year for Blue Water Woman magazine. I put on a, an event usually held at McMoran Place every year. I'm very proud to do it there. Uh, not doing it there this year be, or anywhere because of the pandemic, but we're going to honor some women next year there. But we are honoring women. And this year, I am very, very pleased to honor one of your council members tonight. And so, Anita Ashford, would you come and accept these flowers for me? What? You have been <laughs> named the Blue Water oh, Woman no. Civic Leader of the Year. Oh, <laughs> Masks up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. These are for you. Oh, thank you. So oh. And Donna. Well, Donna was a part of all this. So. <laughs> you didn't need a book. The tears and all. Thank you guys. And so. I know you have a meeting to conduct. I only have four minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have a folder here for you that explains your award. And I, I'll be in touch with you. I do know Anita, so I know how to reach her. Yeah, so thank you. you. Oh, I love you too, Anita. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, wait. Oh, Anita? Oh, let me grab a real quick picture. Oh, okay. First time I've heard Anita speechless. I know.
Thank you. Well, congratulations, Anita. Always nice to have good things happen. Very pretty. Oh, boy. <laughs> Speechless, right? <laughs> it's touching. Oh, boy. Boy. Well, we'll move on with public comment. Yes. Pardon me? No, 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 no. <laughs> wasn't. We just got a little distracted for a so moment. Wasn't. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor and the Council. My name is DJ Palm. I live on Lyons Street here in Port Huron. And you guys know I love you. And I hope I don't give you too tough a love today. We have a little unfinished business, unlike my street signs that are now fixed. Thank you so much. Last year, four of you deemed racism a public health crisis. Seems to me like that would be something outside of your jurisdiction to declare kind of felt like you took my play structure away, like the reputation of this town. I think we got muscled by Lansing. Because three weeks later, racism was just a public health crisis throughout the state of Michigan. Meanwhile, the governor puts Karen Witsit under censure, all because she thanked President Trump for the Right to Try Act when she caught COVID. I'd say the governor has a little private health crisis of her own. Nothing more racist to me white woman telling a black woman in her own party nonetheless to you know keep it down if racism is such the public health crisis Obamacare should be getting repealed yesterday I know before its existence two out of the four men I served with had no more or any less privileges the other two to die for their country obviously councilmember Ashford I know what racism isn't a private health crisis in you you're getting awards, and not only did you take a political beatdown over that play structure all night, you brought Nancy back up here and apologized to her. We forgave one another. And then six months later, we forgot. We missed out on a great story to tell. Why couldn't anybody play politics like that? Government makes mistakes because government is made up of people. Didn't want to play the politics, huh, Councilman Pemberton? That's okay. Nobody else did either. I could have. So I assure you, I'm not uninformed on much. Consider it my own Mayor Pro Tem Archie's mom moment to let all four of you know that I believe every day that resolution sits as is is nothing more than us getting muzzled by Lansing. I'm sick and tired of watching us get worked. If knowledge is power, Mayor Rep, my mind is muscle. I remember telling you a while back that if you ever needed strength, you call me. I still want to defend Port Huron like it had its own soldier. That includes you. That includes Chief Platzer's Leos. Our public health crisis isn't racism. It's media. Media is our public health crisis. Madam Mayor, the 2,176 people in Port Huron that voted for me independently, my pride, has a message for you. Stop ignoring what you've rebuilt here. Don't be afraid to fight anymore. You're actually good at politics, Mayor Rowe. Remember that one time we did play, where at the end I got applauded out of here and you told everyone to keep it down? You had impeccable timing when you cut me off. I was about to say the name of a man who had a lot to do with an impeachment trial we watched last year. The name you cut me off at Qasem Soleimani. Here's DC and geopolitics that won't be so outside your jurisdiction anymore. Soleimani was not planning an attack in Baghdad. Soleimani has been planning attacks in Baghdad for 15 years. He directly financed every murder you can read about in this book, including four friends of mine. It's called They Fought for Each Other. We want Port Huron to start fighting for something. That something is someone. We want to fight for Karen Whitsitt. Your Hopefully four minutes is up. Thank you, Thank you. Madam Mayor and Council. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the Council this evening? 
declare public comment closed. We will move on to from the city manager, number one, please. Accepting the bid from Cold Springs Granite Company in the amount of $27,770 for the purchase of two 40 niche columbaria for Allied Veterans Cemetery. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Yes, Mr. Freed. I'm here. If any questions, I sent you a briefing earlier on today. Um, this is the supplier for these columbariums. This is the reason why we only had one bid. Uh, he supply, this company supplies all the other companies in the area. So after a while, they stopped bidding because they knew they couldn't underbid the supplier. Um, the costs are in line with what we paid over previous years. Now, remember, this is a revenue generator. We do sell these and we make our money back. Um, and they're in strong demand, especially with all the improvements we've had at that cemetery the last couple of years. Any questions for Mr. Freed? I don't have any questions, but I see it's coming from the cemetery fund? Correct. Okay. We'll take the vote. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Resolutions number one, please. Authorizing and approving the submission of the city's amended annual action plan for program year 2019 to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for their review and approval for the purpose of adding the addition of CDBG-CV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Councilmember Ashford supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Go ahead. Did you, oh, you're just standing there waiting for questions. So it's okay. I, usually you have something to say, so I thought I would give you the floor. Is there Patrick any questions? Pony here. He's standing here. <laughs> yep, well, there you go. Is there any questions from council? We will take the vote then. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. Uh, item two under resolutions. Receive and file Redstone Architects Incorporated study for the City of Port Heron Fire Stations dated November 9th, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Mosherak. Is there any questions? Discussion? It seems we have most of it under the item when it was presented, so we'll take the vote. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Under ordinances, number one. Second reading and enactment. An ordinance to amend Chapter 52 Zoning, Article 3, District Regulations, Division 1, Generally, Section 52-162 Map of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances, to rezone the properties generally described as 2706 10th Avenue and 1128 Garfield Street from an R zoning district to an A1 zoning district. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Council Member Ashford, supported by Council Member Mosierak. Is there any discussion? You said we'll probably be starting on this in the spring, right? Yeah, as soon as, it, as soon, our goal is as soon as the, the ground thaws. Okay. Um, right now, it's coordinating with the utilities, so Comcast, EDE, yeah. Semco, to make sure that when we go in, we we got to get them in first before that asphalt goes down. So we lay it. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Just Member a Mayor quick Rep. one. Uh, I noticed on the plans, the street goes up and then comes out. It's going to curve back out onto Garfield Street. Are we using that existing alley? Is that the tentative plan right now? That's there? correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. We have there's a little green space, so where where it loops out towards Garfield. There's actually a lot of green space on the side, and our idea is that we can use that for maybe a future pocket park or just some space, like a community open space where kids can play and whatnot. So yeah. there is a decent level of property there on the, on the west side of that the proposed drive. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor Rapp? Yes, Council Member Lamb. As I was looking at the plans too, um, I'm just um, questioning. It looks like we have a lot of areas that we're gonna um, supply a lot of living space is there going to be ad adequate parking for all these new members and visitors and not interfere with the children 
So during the design, um, we factored on, when, and that's the reason why we're doing this zoning, so we do a condo association to regulate that stuff. So there'll be enough parking for the residents in the driveway. You'll have two vehicle parking within the driveway. But we're also able to do on-street parking on one side by regulating one certain side for on-street parking. Um, so we have addressed that, even with the driveway layouts as well. Okay. Any other questions? We will take the vote. Madam Mayor and Council, yes. this is just one of more than 80 residential units we have going up in the city of Port Huron. So between lofts, single family homes, condominiums, we have more than 80 residential developments in the works right now this year. Mm, really good. Mm -hmm. We will take the vote. Council Member Mosrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. That concludes our business. Uh, one announcement, we do have a special meeting of the City Council which will be held next Monday, February the 1st at 6 p.m. in room 408 and it will be to review letters of interest from qualified and registered electors in, in the city to fill the vacancy on City Council. The deadline to submit is at 4.30 tomorrow and the meeting will be held next Monday at which time we will make a decision on a new council member. Is there anything else to come before the council? Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Thank you, Councilmember Ashford. The meeting is adjourned.